Problem 5 is a little bit different, but it's still a linkage mapping problem. This kind of problem will sometimes appear on some of the standardized tests like MCAT, DAT, and PCAT. And I want to introduce it so that everybody knows how to do this kind of problem. There will be one on the exam like this, and there was one in the lecture also similar. The way that you are looking at this kind of problem is that they've already done two-point test crosses for these genes. Like they did a two-point test cross for gene A and B, gene A and C, and so on. So those two-point test crosses were done, and they've already calculated the recombination frequency for you. So the distance between gene A and B is 10 map units, and so on. Now, when you look at this data, there will be a lot that have a 50. A 50 means the genes aren't linked. And that was one of our rules, that 50 is the theoretical maximum of a recombination frequency that you would be able to calculate from a data set. And so it, we said before that if you got a recombination frequency at 50 or close to 50, that you would say you would assume those genes aren't linked. So when you get this kind of problem where they've already determined the recombination frequencies, what you can do is just eliminate the ones that have a 50, those are, aren't linked. So you're not going to put these on the map, on the same map with each other. So in, you're kind of scribbling those out in a sense. Those aren't helping you to determine linkage. So when you look at what's left, you're, um, you have A and B are linked at 10 map units. A and D are linked at 14 map units. B and D are linked at 4 map units. And then C and E are linked to each other at 8 map units, but neither C nor E is linked to A, B, or D. So you're going to end up having two separate maps. So two non-homologous chromosomes um, are represented in the data. So what you have, what I would do typically is um, for the linkage group of A, B, and D, what I would do is I would start with the biggest number here. So A and D are spaced out the most. So I would draw the line. I'd put A, you know, maybe here and D here. And by the way, they don't have to go in alphabetical order in this problem they sort of do, but um, that's sort of how it just happens to work out. But it doesn't have to be that way. And so A and D are linked at 14 map units, so you need to make sure that this distance, you know, is going to always stay consistent. Oops, 14, I overshot it. And then you need to figure out how you're going to place B. B is 10 units from A, but 4 units from D, D so you could put it, I don't know, maybe here. And this would be, whoops, B. And then this could be a 4. And then over here, it's hard to draw with this pen. This would be a 10. So then that all works. So all the data for the linkage group of A, B, and D, all that all works out together. And then you have a second linkage map. I could have put some more genes on this one, but I didn't. You have C linked to E. This is just going to be a two-point map, and then eight map units between them. And really, you should write out map units, but I'm having trouble with this mouse. So um, eight map units, 14 map units, etc. But that would be, those would be your maps. So on one type of chromosome, you have this group of linked genes. On a different non-homologous chromosome, you have these two linked. And that's what the data would tell you. Um, so that's how you would work that kind of problem. Just the trick is knowing what to do with the ones that have a 50 for recombination frequency. That just tells you that those genes aren't linked to each other. And so fairly not a very difficult way to do it, but you just have to recognize what it is that's being given to you as the data.